we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. From outer space, from another planet. Welcome to S4. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to S4, the official radio broadcast of Forest Moon Paranormal, with host Eric Cooper and our panel of enlightened minds. Coming to you live from FMP headquarters located in the heart of Skagit Valley, Washington, at the base of the majestic North Cascade Mountains. We will take you through a journey of exploration as we examine every aspect of the metaphysical. From spirits, UFOs, Bigfoot, and conspiracies, to grounding, protection, astral travel, and everything in between, leaving you with a better understanding and comprehension of the yeah, world around you, and the entities that inhabit it. Join us every Saturday night at midnight, here on the Not Dreams Talk Radio Network. Also, check out the Forest Moon Paranormal Facebook group to join in the discussion. Bigfoot and other cryptids. And everything in between is terrifying. Yes, we talk about everything. S4 is the voice where we discuss these things in detail. You can find S4 on Night Dreams Talk Radio found at www.nightdreamstalkradio.com. We are also on Terrestrial Radio with KSVU 90.1 FM. For our local listeners, from 10 to 12 p.m. every Saturday night with our pre-recorded shows. So, tonight, it's January 12th. Actually, technically, it's the 13th now. And we're moving on into 2019, so it's night in light of the fact it's been a really rough winter, folks. And, you know, I don't know about you, Megan. How many days did you guys lose power? Oh, man. Combined? <laughs> uh <laughs> Uh, probably eight total in December and November was probably another handful. So, I mean, a good week combined without power. Right. And that's why, uh, uh, that's why tonight we're actually talking, we were supposed to talk winter prep, I think what last week or the the week after. And, uh, in light of, uh, this crazy weather that I know Cole had as well. Cole? Yeah. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I, I was there. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You know, and what really is bad is, and I'm getting off script here, but I've got to say, you know, if you live in town, if you live in the town of Concrete, for example, they have power uh, I believe by the second day, and it, you know it, it. They go where the population is. I get that, but I think the big issue is if they actually did some prep work, if they actually did you know preventive maintenance, they wouldn't have the issues they got. It's always the same areas, the same trees, you know, the same branches. But you don't see, you know, we pay for our power. And that's just the bottom line. And when it really comes down to it, if we're paying for our power, then they need to fix it. They need to, to be a lot more proactive. They need to be, need to be a lot better uh, as far as us having power. Because this is the first winter, I've got to say, that we've actually uh, been, you know, four days straight. And there's been years where you, you go a week straight. So it's kind of important. We're gonna, For the first hour, we're going to actually talk about winter preparation. Um, we have a lot of new folks that move to concrete weekly to the upriver community where the FMP headquarters are. And when it comes down to it, Winter is winter. Disasters are disasters. It doesn't matter if you're in Uganda or if you're in uh, Texas, Florida, or or Spain. A disaster is always going to be the same response. 
So with that, tonight we have Michael Hall from the UFOI team. We have Cole Wigleitner with uh, FMP. He's our culture and lore specialist. And we have Megan, our Marine and FMP security. So how are we doing, guys? Excellent. Doing good. Great. So for the first hour, we're going to talk winter prep, and then the second hour, we're actually going to uh, do what we do best and talk about UFOs and what's going on in 2019 as far as, I don't know. I know you've been doing a lot of research, Megan, but uh, what do you think about the first two weeks of January when it comes oh, to they... UFO sightings? <laughs> they, they've they been very heated. <laughs> Uh, very heated. I actually saw something that I could not identify um, or confirm. So, yeah, the, uh, the, in the, the last two weeks. So. The, the same day as the team meeting, as a matter of fact. Yes. Yes. So, actually, it was last week, and uh, it was one of those fireball things. So, I I know it was not a commercial aircraft. So... But there's been no other reports about it. So, um, you know, what can I say? It was something unidentified. <laughs> right. And, you you know, we're, we're jumping off topic. But I've got oh, to yeah. say, you know, for the first two weeks of January, I, it's, it's been a crazy, so much for disclosure, the UFOs are just coming out, whether you perform or not. Yeah. So what's your, what's your take on that, Michael? Well, I think you're exactly right. Um, matter of fact, uh, there's been some amazing things, sightings just so far uh, that Peter Davenport has been telling us about. Uh, so the year is starting off with a bang, big time. Um, I, th- I think it would be worth our while tonight to maybe have Megan uh, explain to us again uh, her sighting. And the details of it, because that was just fascinating what she saw the other night. And I think people uh, would, I, I have a feeling that people all over the country in different parts of the world are seeing the same kind of thing. And it would be interesting for them to corroborate uh, Megan's sighting with something that they might have seen as themselves. Right. Yeah, go, go ahead, Megan. Okay. Okay, can you hear me? I had you muted. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so um, there's, uh, let's see, a request out of the chat room saying uh, Mr. Cooper needs to turn up his sound. Yeah, I got it. Okay, okay, wasn't sure. So, they um, also want a beard update. Oh, yeah, you want to do the beard update? <laughs> the, the beard is growing. <laughs> the beard okay, is growing. Okay, so... Uh, last Saturday, approximately at 5.09 p.m. Pacific time, I was traveling southbound on I-5 right there by the uh, Washington State Patrol weigh-in station for the semi-trucks um, between the two exits. And I saw out of my peripheral a very um, ochre, amber, almost orange disc light like light there we go like light (laughs) and it was hovering above the tree line it was approximately about 500 feet off the actual deck um it was over a wooded area as soon as i looked at it and and kind of like really acknowledged its presence it disappeared it did not shoot off it did not blink or anything and it never reappeared And from where I was in the vehicle traveling to the location, it was probably within two miles. So um, for it to be that low and that close, the size of it was very small. So again, no blinking. Um, It was a very steady light and it, it was very bright, but it didn't have a halo or anything to it. Um, it wasn't like a laser light. It was a encapsulated self-contained light. And, uh, as soon, like I said, as soon as I acknowledged it, it literally just went to black. And the whole time I was driving the rest of the 20 minutes for my travel time, I was 
looking in that same area to see if it would reappear or if I could see anything else and nothing else ever, um, you know, appeared or, you know, not even like a flyby over the freeway or anything. And at that time on Saturday evening, the freeway was packed and it was right over a very large city. You know, I'm talking probably 25,000 people live within the Stanwood area. And yeah, it, it should have been more reported if it was something substantial, but it was just so peculiar. And, uh, I did look on the flight tracker and there was no reported crafts in the area. So that is what I saw. Like I said, I can't identify it. It was not a commercial craft. So there you have it. Orange file fireball in the size of it. If anybody has looked at Venus lately in the morning sky, um, it was probably about twice the size of Venus, the the glow of Venus. So, you know, I mean, it, it was just, it was small. It was small, but it was very apparent in the sky. But it was larger than any aircraft light that I've even seen. So, you know, it was larger than a spotlight per se, but it didn't have that illumination effect that a spotlight would, if that makes sense. Well, and, and the fact that it disappeared when you acknowledged it shows intelligence. <laughs> it shows intelligent design. Yeah, that's the creepiest part of it. Because it's, I went, what are you? <laughs> like, who? Well, what are you? Uh, Trippin is saying that it could be a reflection off a car. The problem with that is any reflection within your windshield, due to the windshield being made out of two pieces of glass, will give off a halo automatically. So, being that it's me... I was sitting there bobbing my head all up in the windshield trying to see if I could replicate it. <laughs> because the other thing is, I told this to my husband, and he said, well, there's been that flash burn on the hill outside of Mount Vernon. And I said, no, it was the opposite side. I said it was the water side. Because where Sandwood is, it goes down to an area called Warm Beach. And it was over the wooded area before you get to Warm Beach. So there's no mountains out there. It is literally a patch of forest and then a bay. So the hills are on the opposite side of the freeway. I was actually looking westerly, and the hills are on the east side of I-5. Yeah. So and, there you go. And, you know, the...